Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. And that's why Bitsy Timecode is so important. <laughs> oh, <laughs> welcome back to Mac Break Studio. Um, we're here to talk about more Final Cut stuff. And Mark has got a really good one on deck. He's going to show us how to save favorite effects in Final Cut Pro 10. Now, I, I was asking before the show, I, I think you can do that. And he was like saying, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can. You can. It might not be what you expect. And it's um, in some ways, it's, it's not as good as what you might think. In some ways, it's much better. But you can save uh, favorite effects in Final Cut Pro to reuse later over and over again. Ah, and I'll I, show you how I to want do to see this. Okay, so here's the setup. Okay. I, I have this is this is a little um, piece uh, that I did for for Restaurant Delfina recently, um, which is now appearing on Google Maps. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to play a little section of it, but the idea is I'm going to want to pretty it up. So this is something that we shot with the Sony FS700 and high-speed cameras. We shot it at 480 frames per second, Yikes. and it's a it's kind of a food fight holiday fun thing. So I'm going to play just a little section oh, of it here. please, I want to see a food and fight. And see see what it looks like in slow motion. So um, this you know poor woman getting hit with an egg, and then she hits him, and he comes back and hits him. And craziness ensues. Okay, oh, so it's a wait, little. Do you, have, do you have that shot of the flying pizza? I, I just. The, I, I do, but you, it's, you it's gonna, you're going to mess me all up here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'll, show, I'll, show right, okay. I'll, I'll show you at the end. Okay. Um, so, anyway, so what I want to do is I want to treat this with a little bit of an effect, okay? So, I'm going to go to my um, effects browser right. here, and I'm just going to go straight down. I kind of know what I want. So, I'm going to go down to the uh, stylized section, mm -hmm. and down near the bottom, there's one called Super 8. Let me zoom in here a little bit so we can see. So, Super 8, okay? So, I'm just going to drag that on top of this clip, and um, you can see right away, kind of, it has a default look. I can go into the inspector. I'm in the video inspector here. It's a let's, let's zoom in. look. Yeah, so I can kind of turn it off and on. You can see right away yeah. what it does. Sure. But let's say I don't quite like that. Let's say I want to make it a little uh, cooler like that. I want to change the stock to reversal. Maybe I want to reduce the grain and crank up the amount. It's a pretty cool little effect. Yeah, it is. It's nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice effect. Um, and now we've got a, a very different look. Mm -hmm. Uh, this shot here, and if I turn it off and off, you know, you can see it's, it's a big impact, right? Sure. So I want to apply this to everything, and and obviously within this project, I can just copy and paste attributes now, right? Absolutely. So, so no big deal. But let's say I like this and would like to save it for future use with my changes to it. Right. Okay. That's kind of the goal here is I want my custom settings to be saved. So in order to do that. You do have to go to motion to do this. So a reason to have motion. A reason to have motion, yeah. But it's it's very simple to do. So what you want to do is just you can right click directly on that effect and choose. Let me again zoom in just so we can see what's going on here. I'm going to right click on it or control click and choose open a copy in motion. So I'll select that and motion opens. I actually had it open previously, but you can open multiple projects in motion. Nice. And As there a... there it is. So the the effect opens and it doesn't have any material by default. Um, but you can navigate into the event and throw a clip in there if you want. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and throw this clip into the drop zone here. Let me just get it into the effect source so that we have something to look at. And then um, the effects already here. So here's the cool thing. If I go and select the project, the very top thing, it will always be at the very top, and then I go to the inspector, all of those controls, those parameters that we saw in Final Cut are right here. Right. Okay, So you, this is something where you need to have motion, but you don't need to know anything about motion. All you need to know is it's you go in there. It's how to get into its busty innards. Yeah, but this is quick because right. you just busty innards. That's just my Star Wars reference. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so you select the project, and here I am. So now it's just a matter of, of setting these the way I, you know, the way I had done before. Okay, and wait, shot wait. Them I, I have a question. Yeah. Because you had already set that up, and I know. this is the bad part, right? This is the well. <laughs> yes, I have to. I have to do it again because okay. it's, that's what that, I was saying. That's yes, what I was getting at. Because that effect, it, it's always it's stock way. You don't really want to mess with the original effect. So that's why when you open, it's going to have its original settings. So you do need to remember what you did, or do it again, or you know, take a 
take a screenshot or something. But once you get it set up the way you want, um, I'm going to get rid of that little, I'm going to choose the effect source and just clear it out of there. Right. And now you can see it's already named itself Super 8 millimeter Copy. And you can see it's got a reddish tint because of that, you know, yeah. bi that, the red bias that you put on it. Yes. And if I go back to Final Cut, I haven't even saved, but if I go back to file Final Cut and I go back to the um, effects and go back to stylize and go to the bottom, we'll see it's already in there. Okay. It automatically gives it this copy extension. So it's there now. Uh, you know, I need, I need to save to save my changes, but sure. it's done and it's there for use all the time. But I want to take it a little step further. I don't want it just to sit there called Super 8 millimeter Copy because right. it's not meaningful to me. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to choose File and I'm going to choose Save As. Okay. Just Save would just save what's in there right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm nice going to call this um, you know eight millimeter mm -hmm. custom. Okay. You can name it whatever. But the the cool thing is here, I'm going to give it a category. Okay. And what I'm going to do is give it a category that makes sense to me. And I'm just going to call it Favorites because I want to collect all my favorite settings together, okay? So that means within titles, there'll be a category called favorites. favorites. Right. But I'm going to go beyond that. I'm also going to create a theme for it. And this theme, I'm going to call Delfina because I may have, for this Delfina project, I might have titles, transitions, generators, effects, a variety of different things, and it'd be great to see them all in one place. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I can, I can use them all together. So I'll say create. So I've got category favorites, theme Delphine. I'll say publish. And uh, oh, you know what? I didn't, I didn't tell it to not make a um, thumbnail movie. A thumbnail movie. Sorry about that. I mean, under normal circumstances, I notice that you do like to turn off that feature. Yeah, I always, I generally, because I generally turn off. So favorites and Delphina are still there. I don't want to save a preview movie. I don't need it. Generally, it'll play a little preview movie without. Uh, now it's overwriting it. There, done. So if we go back to Final Cut now, this is what I think is really cool, is now in effects, let me scroll up a little bit here, I have a favorites. Ah. And all my favorite effects will now be in there. Once you know, and tweaked in motion. Yeah, yeah. anything that is yeah. tweaked in motion. There it is with my custom settings. And and there you can see if I mouse over it, I still I get the little preview um, in the window. In fact, let's put our playhead over a different clip over here, just so we can see when I move the mouse over it, there we get a a preview of exactly what that effect looks like. And then, just, just to finish it off, if I go to the um, Themes browser right here, I'll have uh, Delphina as a new theme. And then this will store, it looks like the Theme browser only holds transitions and titles, right, by that little picture, because those are the icons for transitions and titles. But it holds effects, as you can see, see that. generators. Any of these different uh, items can be stored in here. So I can have all of my custom effects for Delphine in one place, so I can grab them and throw them on as needed. That's actually a pretty cool feature. Um, so basically, if someone has motion, I mean, they don't know what to do with it, they don't want to get in and learn it, they could still use it to create custom themes and effects that they could quickly apply to their stuff, which is yes. a pretty good use, yes. use of motion. Oh, and if you want to see the flying pizza in the show, I'll put, yeah, a, yeah. I'll put a link at the bottom. Yeah, to the you whole, gotta, you to gotta, the whole piece. You gotta see the video. It's, it's, it's a fun thing. It's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Flying pizzas and... <laughs> uh, spaghetti being dumped on people in slow mo. You just don't want to miss it. It's, it's fun. It's fun. Okay. So, anyway, uh, thanks for watching uh, another episode of Mac Break Studio. I'm Steve Martin, and this is Mark Spencer. And uh, thank you for watching. <laughs>